Welcome to my channel P Concepts CHM. In this video, we are going to see the experiment double refraction. Here we will study about its theory, aim, apparatus, formula, procedure, observation table, calculations, and the result. Theory, two rays emerge from the calcite crystal, one undeflected and the other deflected with respect to the incident beam. The undeflected ray is termed as ordinary because it flow, follows the Snell's law. The deflected ray does not follow the Snell's law and so it is called as the extraordinary ray. The different refraction behavior of these two rays suggest that the refractive index effective with respect to the ordinary ray is different from that of the extraordinary ray. Different refractive indices result from different light velocities. Hence, light traverses the calcite crystal at two different speeds at the same time. The emerging rays are examined with a polarizing filter or a polaroid. During one complete turn of this polarizer, each of the rays disappears twice. Extinctions are 90 degrees apart. This proves that the emerging beams are linearly polarized and their planes of polarization are mutually perpendicular. Extinction always occurs in definite positions. Extinctions means the disappearance of the rays. So extinction always occurs in definite positions of crystal and polarizing filter relative to each other. A. To determine the nature of the material of the given double refracting prism from the value of refractive indices of ordinary and extraordinary rays. Apparatus, spectrometer, mercury source, double refracting prism, ordinary prism, polaroid, spirit level, etc. Formula. Refractive index N O. This corresponds to the ordinary ray that is equal to sine of A plus D M O upon 2 upon or divided by sine A by 2. Same kind of formula you can write on down for an extraordinary ray where A is the angle of prism and D M is the corresponding minimum deviation for that particular color. Procedure Setting up of the spectrometer. The spectrometer base is leveled using a spirit level. The prism table is leveled first with the spirit level. The spectrometer is set with the collimeter towards the light source. The slit is adjusted to be as, as narrow as possible. The image of the slit is adjusted to be at the center of the field of view. The eyepiece of the telescope is adjusted such that the cross wires are seen distinctly. The telescope and the collimeter are adjusted for parallel rays using Schuster's method. The prism table is leveled optically with the help of prism. The least count of the spectrometer is determined. Procedure Measurement of refractive angle A of the prism the ordinary prism is kept on the prism table with its refracting edge at the center and pointing towards the collimator. So that is shown in the diagram. The light from the collimator is incident upon both the refracting surfaces simultaneously. So these are the refracting surfaces and they give rise to reflect, reflected images which you can see through the telescope from both the sides. The telescope is turned first to one side to receive the reflected image. When the image is in the field of view, the telescope is clamped. With the help of the tangential screw, 
The vertical crossbar of the telescope is slowly moved and it is coincided with the image of the slit. In this position, the reading of the main scale and vernier scale of both windows are read. The telescope is unclamped and rotated to the other side till the refracting, reflected image from the second refracting surface of the prism comes into the field of view. When the image of the slit is sighted, the telescope is clamped and with the help of tangential screw, the vertical cross wire is made to coincide with the image of the slit. Again, the readings of the scales from both the windows are recorded. The procedure is repeated thrice. From the readings, the angle of prism is determined. Procedure Here we start with the actual experiment of double refraction. Place the double refracting prism, uh, may, uh, suppose it is made up of calcite. This prism is mounted on the prism table and we obtain the spectra. Place the polaroid between the prism and the telescope with a shorter diagonal parallel to the slit. Rotate it slightly. One of the spectra disappears or becomes faint. The one which is seen is the extraordinary spectrum. Note down the extraordinary ray spectrum is either on the left, left hand side or on the right hand side. The polaroid is only needed to identify which is the ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray spectrum. If you turn the polaroid through 90 degrees, the other spectrum is seen. In case of calcite, the two spectra cannot be seen in the same field of view. You will have to rotate the telescope through quite an angle to see them. Now we will measure the angle of deviation. Get the minimum deviation position for the extraordinary ray spectrum. Note down the readings on both windows X and Y for four colors that is red, yellow, green and blue. Remove the double refracting prism and take the direct reading on both the windows. Repeat steps from 1 to 3 for ordinary ray spectra for the same colors. Calculate the refractive indices of ordinary ray spectrum and extraordinary ray spectrum. If the refractive index of the extraordinary spectrum is less than the refractive index of the ordinary spectrum, then it is a negative crystal, otherwise it is a positive crystal. So these are the readings taken for different colors. Like for red color, we note down the readings on the X window and the Y window. Same is done for yellow, green and violet. We note down the X window and Y window readings. Then we remove the prism and take the direct reading that is X dash. It is same. The direct re reading is the same for all the colors. Same way Y dash is the direct reading taken on the Y window. This we are doing for the, these readings we are taking for the extraordinary spectrum. Then we can take the difference X minus X dash and y minus y dash then take the mean of this column x minus x dash and y minus y dash take the mean you will get delta m substitute it in the formula of refractive index you will get the refractive index for that particular color Same thing is done for the extraordinary spectrum, sorry, for the ordinary spectrum it is done the same. Similar way we take the readings for all the colors and we get the refractive index indices for each color. This is the calculation part. After getting delta M we put it in the formula sin a by 2 where a angle of prism value is 60 degrees so sin of a by 2 is 0 0.5 so that is substituted in the denominators delta m for the corresponding colors are substituted and we get the refractive index
this is for the ordinary spectrum the calculations for ordinary spectrum same way we do and the result we write down the refractive index for each color this is for the ordinary spectrum and this is for the extraordinary spectrum we can take the mean of these indices we get mean mu o and mean mu e and we can verify which one is greater here mu e is less than mu o so hence we say the material of the double refracting prism belongs to the negative type of crystals so if it is a calcite crystal it is a negative type of crystal thank you for watching this video